why am I doing the Golden Globe race? Well, um, in 1968, I was, uh, I was 10 years old, so I was too young. And on the 100th anniversary, I'll be 110 years old, so I'll be too old. The 50th anniversary um, uh, just works about right. And I guess it's a bit more than that. I think, I think a lot of sailors um, aspire to sail around the world, but you know, quite often it doesn't happen. And the GDR is sort of like a catalyst to, um, to action. And um, um, it just provides a, uh, an opportunity to, uh, to, to do it on a certain date in, uh, in interesting circumstances. And it's the 50th anniversary of Sir Robin Knox Johnson's circumnavigation. What a greater, uh, what greater sort of, um, you know, um, um, encouragement could you have to do it? Great. Um, so what was your inspiration into sailing and when did it begin? Uh, my inspiration to sailing, uh, I think it was when I was a kid and we used to go sailing as a family and it was in Port Phillip, you know, in Melbourne, um, hot summers, cold winters. We didn't really know an awful lot about it and we sort of taught ourselves. Um, we went out every weekend, summer and winter. Um, we, you know, made our own wet weather gear. It uh, wasn't very watertight, it sort of leaked. Um, but we were sort of really passionate about it. And just doing that and reading, and it was reading things like, you know, Knox Johnson, Ostar, um, as well as, um, um, you know, um, exploration of the Pacific and Contiki and those types of things. Um, um, and also, I guess, uh, Jacques Cousteau and, and Calypso and all that stuff. Uh, it just created a, um, a great passion uh, that became... Um, Part of my life in sailing and then joining the navy and becoming a hydrographer and um and also what i do now i um, doing hydrographic surveys so it's all part of the same thing it's a marine life and um, um and you know it started in an early age how would you describe the best and worst aspects of your character well um okay um i think uh tenacity um I, uh, I can I really keep at something. I think I have a level of equanimity and um, I, I, I can be calm um, in, uh, in hectic situations. Um, on the bad side, um, probably can be a bit uh, dogmatic at times. Um, and, um, um, oh, gee, I don't know. Um, Single-minded, I guess. Um, I guess... Uh, um, there's sort of a bit of a, um, a balance to the, uh, the tenacity. Um, yeah, that's about it, I reckon. Can you tell us your favourite movie, book uh, and song? Oh, right. Favourite things. Well, I think my favourite movie is um, um, Riddle of the Sands. Um, um, it, uh, it's about uh, sailing in the Frisian Islands. Um, um, uh, basically in the early 1900s. Um, favourite book would have to be Moby Dick. Um, it really is a book about life and um, I like it a lot. Um, call me Ishmael. And uh, music? Um, look, I like a lot of, lot of um, uh, you know, music from the 60s and the 70s and Aussie music and whatever. The stuff I like the best, I think, is the classics. I think um, um, Bizet, The Pearl Fishers, is probably one of my favourite pieces. Gustav Holst, The Planets, that type of uh, that type of thing. So I like you know, a broad range. Uh, what was your most memorable sailing experience in life so far? Oh, my most memorable sailing experience probably. My first long single-handed sail was, was from Sydney to Lord Howe Island. It's about 420 nautical miles. It was in like 1984 when I was 26 years old um, in a 39-foot catch and under astro navigation and making the landfall on Lord Howe Island, waking up in the morning and there it was, sort of 35 miles ahead, fine on the port bow, was pretty... Uh, Pretty exciting. I think that uh, that was um, probably, if you wanted to distill it down to a moment, that was probably it. 
Uh, why do you think you can survive this grueling adventure and what will be the toughest part for you? Well, frankly, I think, oh, sorry, why, why will I survive this, uh, I'll start again. Why will I, why will, will I survive this, uh, this adventure and the, what will be the toughest part? Well, um, I, um, um, I think, I think I'll survive because, uh, I, I, I think I'm tenacious. I, I think I won't want to give up. Um, and I think I'm also reasonably conservative and we've put a lot of preparation into the boat. So I'm not necessarily, um, the fastest, but I might be the last man standing. Maybe the Stephen Bradbury of, um, of the Golden Globe race. Um, uh, what was the second part of the question? Sorry. Uh, what will be the toughest part for you? The toughest part to me, frankly, the toughest part I think is getting to the starting line, getting everything prepared. That's such a daunting task. We've got less than a year to go and there's just so much to do. And, um, it's, um, um, you know, it's relentless, the amount of work and preparation that needs to occur. Plus, I'm working full time and traveling a lot and doing a lot of things. So um, I think that's quite a tough, uh, a tough thing getting to the start line. To my mind, when the start line go, the gun goes at the start line, hallelujah, nine months of peace and quiet, I reckon. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. Have you ever experienced real fear? And if you have, when was that? Um, no, I haven't at the moment. I'm sure I'm about to. Uh, what are you most looking forward to by entering the race? Um, I think, what am I most looking forward to? Look, I think getting into a rhythm, I think, um, sailing through the North and South Atlantic, um, sailing through the Southern Ocean, um, uh, getting it uh, into a rhythm at peace and being able to um, do it sort of um, um, you know, getting it yeah just that, that rhythm and that sustainability and um, uh, just the, um, the, um, the peace and, and tranquility and that that brings um, that's that's sort of what I'm looking forward to. What will you miss most during your time at sea? Oh, look, I think, I think I miss my family, um, the most, um, while I'm away, um, um, you know, wife, family, living in Adelaide, it's all very nice. Um, and so, um, um, it will be, um, it will be the, se the separation I think will be, um, um, w I will miss that. Um, and, um, um, so, um, so that, that, that I think will be the, 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 the thing that I, um, I miss the most. Do you think this whole experience will change you in any way or do you think it already has? Um, will this change me in any way or has it already? Um, I suspect it has already. Um, I think um, um, it brings you into the here and now. It really grounds you. Um, you know, there's stuff to be done. There's no time to lose. And I think the danger is, is that you can get into a void of um, going to work and coming home and all of a sudden the years pass you by. Um, at the moment, I measure every day that goes past and the things I need to do. So I think it's created a reality um, that I'm living life minute by minute. And that's, I think that's a good thing. I think it's bad when life passes you by and it's good to be immersed in it. Uh, why did you choose the yacht you have and tell us a bit about it? Why did I choose Coconut? Well, Coconut was, uh, was my salvation actually. Um, I found out about the race um, a year ago um, in, uh, in June uh, 19, uh, sorry, 20, uh, 2016 and um, um, the race had already been um, advertised for a year and um, there, were, uh, there were nine people on the wait list and 
I found out about it and I thought, my God, this is really interesting. I'd really love to do this. Um, but I came to the realization that it really wasn't practical. Here am I working in Adelaide, you know, half a world away from, from, from where it's happening. And I just so happened to uh, find, um, um, well, I got, I got an email from the, uh, the race director saying these are the, the classes of boat that have been approved. And, um, and then um, that was updated and the Lello 34 uh, class was, uh, was included on the list. And there happened to be a Lello 34 coconut for sale in Adelaide and it was half an hour um, from where I lived. So I basically went to see it immediately and, um, and basically uh, um, committed to buy it um, almost straight away because I thought that it, it really wasn't practical to go in the race, but this was the one way it would be practical with this boat that was available here in Adelaide and I could, you know, um, um, refit it and, uh, and prepare it and, uh, and, 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 um, and take it to the start. So um, serendipity, really. How, um, how are you changing the boat to make it safer or faster? Well, how are we changing the boat? Um, we've done a lot of work on coconut. Um, we, um, we pulled her out of the water and, um, and, and did a lot of um, structural work we put in hanging knees in the main cabin and that sort of strengthened the connection from the hull deck coach house, transferring the weight. So if you get slammed down on your beam ends, um, rather than the, the, the coach house splitting from the hull, it's the weights transferred um, to the other side by hanging knees. So that was a big thing. We, we, we strengthened the, um, uh, the, the, the hull um, amidships either side um, um, strengthen the uh, the watertight bulkhead. Put in a watertight door in the water, water in, in in the main bulkhead, which was uh, um, significant. Uh, new chain plates, um, crash bulkhead up forward, um, and one of the main things was the mast. We took the mast off. We replaced everything off the mast. We uh, we bought a, uh, a second hand mast and cut out sections from it and strengthened the lower third of the mast um, with uh, sections from another mast. And um, we went from one spreader to two spreaders. We've rigged it very, very strongly. And um, um, the guy that's helped me rig the boat, um, Ken Banwell, um, rigged um, Anaconda for the, I think it was in 1976 for um, BOC Round the World Race. So um, um, this is a, uh, a, a significant uh, um, um, undertaking and, and the, he had a lot of wisdom to be able to uh, guide me through that process. Um, and lots of little things, um, polycarbonate windows, new doghouse, um, uh, solid rail around the boat at uh, 80 centimetres, um, new sails, um, um, companionway combing to keep the water out from down below, new electrics, new batteries, bilge pumps, you name it. It's an endless list. We've rebuilt it um, and, uh, and coconut uh, lives again. Uh, a sexton and a cor uh, sorry, a sexton and a chronometer often have a story behind them. Do yours yet? And uh, is there anything special about them in particular? Um, the history behind my sexton and chronometer. Well, um, I um, um, joined the um, Navy back in 1977. And in those days, we were navigating by um, sextant. That was uh, pre-GPS. And... Um, 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 yeah, taking sextants, uh, deck watches, um, that type of thing. So I was brought up with that. So when when I heard that we you know we had to use traditional methods, I went out in search of you know typical um, uh, navy chronometers. I found an eight day chronometer. Um, um, uh, it's uh, um, a Waltham um, uh, from 1904 from the U.S. Navy. And I've, uh, I've purchased that and it's being refurbished. I also found a deck watch, um, also from the new US Navy from 1946, um, which is a Hamilton, and uh, I've purchased that. Regarding the sextant, um, I have my own sextant from when I was uh, uh, navigating um, um, Curlew and uh, uh, um, uh, Yarra um, in the Navy in the, in the early 1980s, and I, I then used that on on sailing to um, Lord Howe Island and um, New Zealand 
So it's my uh, trusty Tamiya um, aluminium and brass sextant. Um, it's, um, you know, I've had it since the, uh, the early 80s. Um, it, uh, the, the mirrors were somewhat tarnished and I, I removed those and was able to get them silvered by, um, by crane glass, which just is about a kilometer from here, which is quite amazing really, and he, uh, he, he re-silvered my mirrors for the grand total of $35, which I thought was a pretty good deal. So effectively, I've got a, uh, um, a, a sextant um, like new, and I just have to um, um, adjust it for index error and the normal things, and, uh, and off we go. Uh, when was the last time you cried, and can you share this experience with us? Oh, I think the last time I cried was at my dad's funeral, which was in 2003, and that was pretty sad. Uh, describe your impression of the Southern Ocean in a few words, and how you think you will feel after rounded Cape Horn. Oh, my impression of the Southern Ocean. Um, um, I've done a bit of sailing in the Southern Ocean. I've I've sailed, um, I sailed to New Zealand and back, I've um, sailed uh, around Tasmania, um, certainly haven't sailed around the world like we're doing here. Um, what's my impression? Cold and wet. Um, I think the deal is uh, pick your latitude. As we come around Cape of Good Hope, um, it'll be uh, the end of winter and the start of spring, so um, I think uh, keeping above 40 might be the, the way to go. And as um, spring comes on and we come to summer, we'll be able to uh, drop down um, to get um, uh, south of Tassie and then um, as, we, uh, as we head towards um, South America, we'll drop uh, and, and under New Zealand, we'll drop further south. Uh, rounding Cape Horn, um, well, that will be very satisfying and, um, but I imagine it will also, um, uh, it's putting you within, um, within sight of the, uh, of the finish. So, um, um, yeah, I think that will be an interesting feeling because I, I imagine, um, um, you know, it will be a great rewarding experience going round, but it will be, you know, a bit of the adventure coming towards the end, which, um, um, yeah, will require a little bit of adjustment. Um, I guess it depends how I feel after, um, you know, seven months at sea, whether I've had enough or whether I'm, I'm, uh, I'm um, in, in the groove, but we'll, uh, we'll see. <laughs> and uh, finally, who will be at the finish line to meet you when you finish? Who will be at the finish line? Well, that's a good question. And um, it's like people ask me, um, well, what are your plans when you finish? Are you going to sail the boat back? Are you going to leave it in Europe and sail it there? Are you going to sell it? Are you going to send it back on the ship? Um, look, I think my challenge is get to the start line and then my next challenge is get to the finish. And uh, We'll worry about putting plans in place for um, 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 uh, finishing, uh, meeting, and, uh, and thereafter. I'm sure those plans will come together um, and they don't require uh, taking up <laughs> a lot of, occupying a lot of thought now. It'll come together. There's too many things to think about uh, getting to the start than worrying about what's going to happen after the finish. Great. Well, that's it. Um, did you have any final thoughts or anything you wanted to say in addition to the question? Um, yeah, well, I don't know. I think that sort of covers it. I think uh, um, it's an exciting thing. Um, you know, I, you know, when people say, what, you know, why are you doing this? I go, well, you know, in a way, I spent 20 years at school and... Um, uh, education, you know, um, and then um, um, 20 years in the military. Um, I've been 20 years in, uh, in corporate life, um, um, although it's been operational surveying type things. Um, so, the, you know, 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, and another 20 years I'm going to be dead. So um, why am I doing it and uh, what, what's it all about? Well, it's all about living life to the fullest and, um, and doing something which is um, oh, it's just something special. You know, it's something that, uh, that occurred only 50 years ago and probably sailing at that time had more in common 
with Cook and Flinders and the, you know, the old navigators that it does to modern day life with um, you know, um, um, electric everything and computer aided everything. And um, I think that this is really going back to, um, um, to, to simple things. And although it's only 50 years, it's, it's, it's going back um, really uh, to, um, well, as, uh, as they say, the golden age of sailing. So um, I think that's, uh, that's a very appealing thing. Great, well, that's, that's it. <laughs> it's How done. long did that take? I don't know. <laughs> Can't tell you, I don't know. All right, very well, thank you. No worries.